self-destruct. I, I gotta put on my glasses. Yeah, um, put on your glasses. In the meantime, we, welcome to the Attitude Era, baby. February <laughs> wants to change. The Patreon has changed. Rad Two Cast is here, and B Man's jacked off his dick, baby. Now I'll do the intro. Anthony always likes to hear. We're just three comedians <laughs> out here spitballing. It's like a writer's room. You come in, you don't know what to expect. You got Greg Stone. What's he bring to the table? Charisma, uh, captivating stories, a sense of sexuality unprecedented. Greg, uh, if you could, uh, you know. No, uh, keep going, keep going. I'm not going to uh, An unprecedented time. sense of sexuality, a cool hat like a cat burglar, a beard, <laughs> the likes of which I've never seen his beard better groomed. If you're not watching the videos on YouTube, well then go uh, put a knife through your mother's heart because that's what you're as good as doing. Then on the other end, we've got Anthony comedic superstar is there a show on television well he's done it uh, <laughs> right. and guess right. what did he stop at tv no sure he's an irreverent co comic does that mean he didn't hit deep hard and straight to the heartstrings on ira glass's own this american life yes you know him from that as well if you came from there you haven't stuck around here i'll tell you that much <laughs> and uh, it's the one and only <laughs> <laughs> it's the one and only New Jersey devil, Anthony DeVito, coming live from Cincinnati with an air mattress in his background with him and his wonderful woman have gone to uh, foster. They've fostered a baby, which is actually uh, his uh, uh, niece-in-law that uh, they haven't fostered. They're just there helping, but it's a very kind atmosphere. And gr Speaking of atmosphere, my friends, See speaking of atmosphere, oh, no. Greg appears on the <laughs> podcast with Mike. a phenomenal new atmosphere t-shirt. <laughs> Oh, Wonderful, yeah. representing Slug, one of the few people oh. to really n n be one guy named Slug, but also uh, call his have a group, even though it's just Slug. <laughs> yeah, like a really. one man who's I, got I, a name, but also in the group that is his name. Yeah, it could just be Slug. I mean, I think technically it might be. Listeners, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it might be. Uh, 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 it wasn't, uh, I used to think it was Doesn't idea matter. from idea and abilities and idea died, but he was never in atmosphere. It, but I think there is a DJ that is technically in atmosphere, making it slug and a DJ, but I'm not is, sure. I, I think it's DJ Ant, right? Yes. Right. Right. I think he's technically in atmosphere. You got to know your enemies, Greg. Yeah. Yeah. I got to know my what? <laughs> you got to know your enemies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You don't hate him. Hate him like that though. I think I know you think he's for 17 year old girls. But he has evolved. Even his new stuff, I think, is even better. Look, man, I'm a man with a kind heart. Obviously, I will, I will uh, try to listen to Atmosphere again <laughs> just because my dear friend loves him so much, and it pains me to be at such uh, to come to such a different place with someone where I share uh, such a mind is fascinating to me. So I will try to no end to find what you have found in Atmosphere. But my God, have I never seen it! <laughs> well and i know brendan's a fan as well i know that the old stuff where he came up on i liked that was a, that was that was music for an age that i his sure. old stuff i even look back and i go I oh i'm that. not of that time anymore right. but songs like uh smart went crazy i'll always love and sure. there's this one i've been listening to now uh which i think is really good that you might like i don't know if we can play it on the podcast but uh i'll, I'll tell you it i feel like uh brendan's I don't know. It looks un unreasonably mad. Well, I don't well know no, because Brendan has opinions about atmosphere, so I think he's holding them back. I thought the opinions were good. No, they are. They are, but I think he's 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 letting them marinate in his head. Oh, he's letting it juice. Yeah. Um. Right. So, uh, Brendan, I feel like as I look for this song, uh, you're raring to go. Okay. You know, he's no, you know, he's no Aesop Rock to me. You you get that right. You know. I'm Just a, tell me. I wouldn't even. Yeah, they're not even Just the same. Tell me when you want to release the Kraken. <laughs> Whoosh. Come out of your lair, Kraken. I have never even known of this. What are you fucking stupid? Atmosphere is unbelievable. And yes, he evolved. He was a young man. The guy started rhyming at sixteen. He was like, a young holy man. Bull. Most people rhyme very young. You know, you're yeah. introduced to uh, nursery sure. rhymes. You know, I feel like rhyming is one of the first types of talk you do. Atmos, here's the thing. Here's no, the no, whenever is the name of the song with Gift no. to Gab. Check that out. And I'm yeah. sure I'm in a minority here. I go Gift to Gab. Sorry, Greg. I was on, I caught you on the tail end. I apologize. Here's oh yeah, check out do, the phone call. Whenever, really good. 
Okay, I will, and I, I will with an open heart. I got homework and for an you. empty mind. I got homework for you. It's gonna you know be how about, I love homework. I love feeling like I'm back at school. It's gonna be about, <laughs> it's gonna be about six, seven hours. You need to <laughs> you need to listen to Atmosphere's entire catalog. Yes, every nice. song every and all of Clone Wars. Song. Not until you've watched all of Clone Wars. <laughs> yeah, and make your decision because you know what it is. Okay. It's such. It's not only not mm. only is his voice unique, his cadence unique, his uh, his um, uh, his his style, his flow is great. Yes, of Oof. course he's not fine. He's, I'll go with voice unique, but, cadence unique. That I, went crazy. I, oh. Kids went crazy. But Little girls had. Mike, in on your daisies. Close, Close my window, Westbrook. Mike. Close my window. <laughs> here's the here's what's beautiful, man. Here's what's beautiful about about atmosphere, right? Okay, and yes. and you got to get into certain songs to realize this. But uh, and for those of you that aren't uh, a hip hop aficionado, slug. Is uh, let's correct yourself. White hip hop, please. Okay, <laughs> this yeah. is. So, I so, only listen to white rappers. Yeah. It's atmosphere, Aesop <laughs> Rock, and Brother Ali because he's albino. All right, he slid in. He slid in. <laughs> This yeah. is not. I'll tell you this for Greg's calling card of his, uh, not being a racist. You go to Greg's tendency towards rap music. It does not look good. No, no I mean if we're gonna play the game, you know Wu Tang Clan, big fan of the Jizza, and I'm sure there's another black one in there somewhere. But yeah, oh, and yeah. I mean Brother Ali counts. You know, there are nine of them. Brother Ali, I was a huge yeah. Brother Ali fan, and then that guy tried to fuck my girlfriend, and I said, "Hey, man, I'm not a fan anymore." I'm not Wait listening. a minute. If, <laughs> yeah. if trying to fuck your girlfriend makes you not a friend, I better close my screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, but you know you you know it's an open book for you. This is the library. Long you bring it back in a timely manner, and even if you don't, twenty nine cents a month. Yeah, man. Small charge. Small <laughs> yeah. charge. A couple. You got a couple of nickels on you. You'll be fine. <laughs> you hey, maybe, if you help out the library, we cut them fees. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever have that moment where uh, I had this? Um, you ever where you have an overdue book from the library? You've had it for let's say seven years. Yeah, and you go. Yeah, a minimum. I, I might have to change my name. I might have to change my government name because I'm such a wanted man. Hold and on, then play you, this out, Anthony. Bring it into the library. Bring it into the okay, library. For sure. So here I go. I've had this John Updike book, Run Rabbit Run, for seven years. Oh, uh, uh, oh, young I, man. <laughs> Uh -oh. No, no, no. Just tell the story. I don't oh, know what he's doing. Let me walk through the... I'm okay. that down. I, gonna I, exactly walk through the library I was going to play act it with him, but uh, okay, okay. No, yeah, because then I, I won't be able to talk, and I'm yeah. too excited. <laughs> <laughs> you can't play another part. There's so many people in the library, Greg. No, because I'm trying I'm to get the frogman. I look, I'm just we're doing this atmosphere thing, Why but we've got to get the frogman. Yeah, what if you're a guy a behind us? We can take our time. I guess well, we can yeah. take our time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if you're a guy behind Sorry, Anthony in line who doesn't know Perfect. about library fees? What if my guy look, Greg's got a in line you cannot, yeah. who wants to tell everybody about Frogman, this new action figure right. we got? You can't yeah. enforce the character on Greg. First of all, he won't <laughs> listen. Okay. Nope. <laughs> so don't. Uh, so, you know what? I'm not even listening now. It's a miracle <laughs> that me talking to you makes any sense because I'm just talking. I tried to force an act out on you, Anthony. No, I apologize no, no. Because no, no, I, I, I find no. the same thing fascinating, but you just tell the story. Oh, Brendan, do your act out for okay. the John sake Updike. of sticking it to Greg. Okay. Here I come through the Queen's Library doors in Sunnyside, Queens, just a sheepish head low. Mm -hmm. With my, I present my book. I go, look, just so you know, before you say anything, uh, I've experienced a lot of death in my family. So keep <laughs> that in mind when I've okay, held on to this yeah. book. And by the way, I haven't read the book. I, okay. I, I got a quarter yeah. of the way done with it. I loved it. Put it down. Never picked it up again. Here's a book. It's about seven years overdue. I, my sincerest apology. Just tell me what I'm looking at in terms of fees. Okay, well, young man, this is not good, of course. Seven years, very long time. But J John Updike, that'll happen. Same thing happened to me with a prayer for Owen Meany. Loved it. <laughs> Couldn't get through one chapter. I don't know what it is about Updike. But anyway, let me put it in the computer here. Seven, seven years, you say, not good. I feel, I, if I could say something about Updike, I do think he, he kind of... He, I like him because he walks the line between masculinity and femininity. He's like a man of the modern time, but in his era. So I think that's. I know a man's feminine through his books. You to could me, tell. Always with the wiggle in their hips and the sass in their lisp. You could tell, man, if you read Ernest Hemingway and then you read John Up, you read Ernest well, Hemingway. That guy looks on, like man, he's clutching you. an Just axe in one all, hand as he's writing. 
You just said if you read Ernest Hemingway, first to almost read the book that I'll never read about John Updike, <laughs> you prerequisite with me having to read Hemingway? Yeah, I barely Hemingway. read texts. Greg, this is you, a you know, librarian. Hang on for a second. No problem. I all got right. all day. I gotta approach. I gotta approach my man with an action figure in his hand behind me in line. <laughs> I'm not saying you gotta read him. I'm just saying if you're familiar with the character of who he is, uh, oh, like I am not. All right. So this is a this is a guy that you know. Um, you just think about who Brendan aspires to, to be. be. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. You right. Got him. There you go. Yeah. I'm okay. looking at him. This right. is this is exactly <laughs> this is exactly what we love to see in the public library system. A spirited debate about books. Literature is alive and well in America. Anyway, uh, uh, seven years here, you say? Oh, That's about, yeah. Oh, young man, I hope. Uh, been doing pretty good in the stock market lately. Uh, I have, I haven't. I, well, I'm currently working at Apple, and they've uh, they have offered me shares. But I'd like to just add an editor's note here, <laughs> which I picked up from the beginning when you said Sunnyside. I went, he doesn't live in Sunnyside, right? And then you say Apple, and I go, wow, this is Anthony 2009. Yeah, you, this is a real memory. This is a real. We're pulling from real shit here. Yeah, the Sunnyside Library to working in the Apple Store, man, maybe 10, maybe 2010. Yeah, somewhere around then. And I hate to do the I hate to do this to you, young man, because you seem like a sweet young man. You're reading, you're bettering yourself, you're working hard. Trying. Seven years is seven years, and uh you owe the New York public library system seventy-nine cents. <laughs> Are you sure about that? I I'm I sure. don't want to steal I'm money sure. from and worse worse yet worse yet, if you don't pay Nothing really happens. And I'd also like to add that Rock every man. Thursday is uh, real, who cares about fines day, where you <laughs> just tell them and they yeah. relinquish all your fines. Yeah, it's they literally those every week. It's like when Evan Williams turned in all his guns. It's the same. It's the same deal. It's when the cops have the hey, just drop off a gun, no questions asked day. Hey, who, Evan <laughs> Williams, our friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I think. Oh, he did. yeah. He told that story about bringing his gun from the store. Yeah, oh, he, wow. Yeah, yeah. He brought all his guns back to 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 uh, the cops when they had one of their free. Like, hey, we'll look. We'll close our eyes. Just drop them off. <laughs> Nobody's checking the serial numbers on this baby. We just want them off the street. Well, this was crazy. Evan was like, I mean, actually, we should talk to him. I, I've yelled at him before. It's like, yeah, but you had a legal gun. You could have sold it to someone, but he was like, he went through a whole thing where he didn't want guns in the world because of yeah. some, so you know, whatever. Let's Evan's not here. Let's not, let's not get into his hickory. Well, no, and also it was illegal to have a gun in New York. Right, so not for he, me. he had guns legally, but not in where he came from. Evan Williams, by the way, great comedian. Check him out. Anthony's point is libraries. Go ahead. <laughs> keep the book as long as you want. The fees, they're the only place working off the Never increase the fees. We opened yeah. in 1801. The fees have been the same ever since. The opposite <laughs> of Blockbuster, yeah. who charged you $39 a night yeah. overdue, yeah. and then oh. you just got to keep that thing, and then they went out of business. And they'll yeah. rub it in your face when you bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> they'll tell right? you, they'll restate the movie you've rented to incur the fee <laughs> and let you sit in your uh, uh, mistake. Yeah, and they let you know that actual VHS tapes aren't ten dollars like you think. They're actually ninety dollars, which who knew that Forrest Gump, when I rented it, was a ninety dollar movie that I lost. Yeah. That it was like I thought they were twenty. And like, no, I also need to tell you guys a real quick thing. If I could pivot, unless you want to get back on Blockbuster, I'm having a real problem right now. Okay, what's up? What's up? Uh, so I think this is why I forget why I never wear this black hat, but it's a big problem. Tita, I run in with Tita is that I with the beard especially. I just look so much like my brother that I'm looking in the mirror and my God, I don't even see myself. I just see my brother and it's, it's, it's horrible. And Tita said, she doesn't like when I wear black because she's like, I don't want to fuck your brother. I mean, not that I <laughs> wouldn't, but you're the, the only thing different is that he only wears black and he's in a band. So what you got to do is dye your hair white. So you look exactly like your dad and you go, <laughs> Tita, did you want to bang my father? And she would say, yes, you should <laughs> see how much they talk. Yeah, it's true. That's a gab fest. Uh, I don't know. I, you what don't is, like him? Well, you look like I, him in all conditions. I even think you look more like him with the hat on. I think that's what I'm saying. Look the hat like, makes me look too much like him that I have to take it off. Oh, I that's see. so crazy that Greg literally started 
his <laughs> rant. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, this is yeah, against you, Anthony. Exactly. Uh, I'm you. with you on this. He started Damn his it. rant. Classic Anthony's not listening deal. Specifically against the hat because it makes him look too much <laughs> like Joe. Oh, and your man. closing comments were, I think, even more with the hat. And well, <laughs> hey, look, like, I'm, 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 uh, I'm man enough to admit wrong. <laughs> Fuck yep. I, I thought, you know, I'd heard differently. Well, no, I would... well, you, yeah, it's not that you didn't hear. You, you heard it. You didn't listen to it. Uh, here comes Greg's hmm? indictment. Yeah. What yes. Is I apologize, because, oh. and then Greg. I apologize. I put myself at the mercy of the court, and mm -hmm. then the court takes out a hammer and throws it across the face on me. <laughs> yeah, I don't it's not know just why. for beating the gavel; it's for hitting your hands. Yeah. yeah, man, unreal. Because you just did a whole bit in the beginning. I don't know if you remember about how I don't listen, but we're just two not listeners. So I'd like to throw it out there that you also don't listen. And in all fairness, Anthony, in all know. fairness this, this to you, this isn't really. This is coming off harsher than I want. No, I, well, I mean, and that's why, and that's why I'm going to say what I'm going to say, and everything will be smoother than a buttercream <laughs> cake. Uh, in all fairness to you, you listen to things that matter. Greg listens to things that matter. You kind of might miss a thing that's not really important. I, in my little fucking, in my little <laughs> fucking uh, angry brain, am constantly on the lookout for for a takedown fact. <laughs> You know, I, I all I'm listening for right. is to bust a guy in the act. So right, who's, right. The, who's in the wrong here? Me. Mm -hmm. Who's in the wrong here? Brendan. That's who's in the wrong. So don't. Yeah. So so you listen to Greg's story. You listen because you cared as a friend. Whereas I listen to say, what are the details that Anthony's going to miss? And right. how am I going to burn his ass? I'd also like to add to Anthony, because if I'm going to take it down, I want to push you up. What you listen for, and I do believe this is a similar thing. Maybe I'm similar, is that you listen for the heart. Dad's lecture me. Now you hear, you listen for the heart of the yeah. tale. Okay? Specific, it's not what color the car is. It's who is driving. You know what I mean? Like, is it a good man, a bad man? I guess. Hard to tell know. from a just a drive by junior. This is why he gives me a compliment, and then he goes, "I guess." <laughs> well, well, I guess with my, I guess with my example, my example oh, was right. what I was guessing at, not if uh, I, what you're listening to. And if I need you to know something, I know to repeat it. I don't stop talking, so I know that this is important. I got to send a text. Yeah, I missed a detail. For the record, I missed a detail. Oh. And also, because I'm just bringing it up because also we heard that rap song that that guy made for us, and he said something something, and Anthony is confused. And I, that's what oh, made I, me laugh. I will. Oh, I'm uh, confused. I'll admit to confusion. Of course. <laughs> no, by the way, confusion, confusion is your blanket of you go, hey, I'm confused about this. And I'm like, confused about what? I just said my middle name is Francis. And you're like, I found that confusing. Was it confusing or were you in Bali up here? Were you? This is it, man. Brendan, what are we seeing here? What? I go, I stand confused. And then Greg throws another hammer at me. Yeah, uh, it's, it's right. Uh, hammers. This is a classic, uh, classic Mario Brothers situation. He's he's one of the hammer bros. Uh, <laughs> I gotta take his hat jumping off. It's around, black and, and they're, the, they're, they're the toughest. They're the toughest foe, as everyone knows, in Mario Brothers, because they don't. <laughs> they, uh, unlike a unlike a, a Koopa Trooper, they don't really follow a pattern, you know. Uh, so, and Greg is a, like a hammer bro coming after you, jumping from those two brick uh, ledges, seemingly suspended in midair. Which I'd like to get a little background <laughs> on. What's the? You went to architecture school. What's going mm -hmm. on there? Are those uh, are those uh, uh, floating shelves? And is that sky maybe a wall? What is going on? <laughs> Mike, you got to bring up a picture. Uh, I don't a hundred percent understand what you're saying. Well, so I, I was argue, listening, Greg. I here's the thing: I was not listening, and I thought I could jump in on the end there. I also don't know what was being said there. So, slap in your face, slap in my face. I slap you know? in no one's face. Slap in, no one's been slapped. No, if anyone's been slapped in the face here today, it was Anthony by me, for which I rightfully claimed. That was a character flaw of my own with nothing to do with Anthony. And I apologize. And I'm a, I'm a nitpicker and a general fuckwit. 
Uh, and I and I apologize and I take full responsibility. Now, what I'm talking about, Greg, you don't be that mean to yourself. No, man. no, no. I wasn't, I'm, I wasn't, I'm listening. A, I wasn't I'm listening a, there. I'm an old, I'm an old shit, shit for dicks, good for nothing, rotten egg. I'm a dirty old egg, egg sucking dog. Hey, you know what it is? This is what I think. This is what I do. I noticed whenever yeah. I notice I'm not listening to someone because what I do is when they start the car, which is whatever they're talking about, I go, I know where he's going. I'll meet them there, right? And then I check out for the whole ride because I know where they're going. And then when they go like McDonald's, I go, yeah, I knew we were going here. Cool. So McDonald's. But sometimes they're like the ranch. And I'm like, whoa, I thought we were going to McDonald's. And I was not paying attention as we were driving. You got to tell me how we got here. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I, I think I do that. I, I, would, I wonder if maybe you do a similar thing. Who, Brendan? No, no you. Oh, me. Um. I don't. I get if I if there's too many details, I get confused. <laughs> That's what happens with me. Um, if I'm bombarded, I usually have a pretty good handle on the beginning of stuff, and then if too many details flood the market, I I just I, I have a I don't have a load to handle a, a lot of details. So okay. nothing wrong with that, man. You're not yeah. a you're a big picture guy. That's who do you think? I mean, who do you think you, you're talking? Steven Sodenberg. Scott Rudin, the greats, you know, they see yeah. the big picture. Yeah, are they gonna are they gonna uh well, who are those people and what were they the greats of? Just to fill me <laughs> in. I think they're even movie Soderbergh? producers, you know what I mean? They don't even bother making the movie. They say, I got the idea, I got the cash, that's all I got time for. Trust yeah. me, it's gonna be big. Else do it. Make it happen. You know what? Right. Hire Chris Columbus to direct it. Home Alone and Harry Potter, the guy can't fail. And I think another slam bang. Dip that pit. <laughs> I don't, he, Christopher Columbus did Harry Potter. Yeah, they, he, he had to change his name to Chris because uh, he was getting confused with the the guy who uh, you know mm -hmm. a lot of people like to take it away from him, but the guy who sure. discovered the land of America right. clearly yeah, discovered it. If you ever tell my mom that Christopher Columbus even hint that he was a bad guy, you'll find yourself out of her apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Now, See, Christopher Columbus, I just want to add to this real quick, sure. is like um, one of these restaurant, he's like a Anthony Bourdain, right? Where he goes into a restaurant and then he tells the world about this food and then everyone, and then it becomes huge, right? But then all the people who were in Thailand were like, we knew about this omelet lady from the get-go. And they're like, we've been here. And you go, yeah, but, you know, Bourdain made it famous. You right. know, he made it right. big. He brought all the tourists in and then... <laughs> Made all the people who lived around there not able to afford the restaurant anymore. I mean, yeah. arguably, gave, gave all of Chiang Mai smallpox. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Arguably, Christopher Columbus, uh, uh, Anthony Bourdain, a little nicer to the locals than uh, Christopher Columbus. But you don't know that. I do. I've heard yeah, tales no. about Anthony Bourdain. I'll he say this: slavery ring. Okay. Well, I was gonna say, if, unless he had his own slavery, <laughs> it's gonna be pretty hard to rival old Columbo. It was whitewashed because of Netflix. No. <laughs> Netflix had to deal with Netflix, and they didn't want that on them. So uh, they whitewashed Anthony Bourdain's slavery ring. Mike, a uh, couple things here, because uh, uh, what Greg's saying bears no response. It's just the truth. Uh, it's, just, it's just the this damn truth. This is how QAnon begins, by the yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it yeah, it literally is. Uh, the crazy thing about QAnon, and I don't want to get too far into this, but it's like, you didn't even have to bring pedophilia into it. You just added that right. as like a bonus. Like the whole, it could have been just a global cabal of the elite trying to run the world. And you were like, you know what? Not exciting enough. Add in satanic pedophilia. <laughs> like, what? I got info on this. Sorry, I got info on why that actually happened now, why? which you probably would guess. But so they believe that what really QAnon was, so QAnon kind of came from 4chan. And a big thing with 4chan, what they would do is it was kind of a one-up game with who could create the craziest wild thing to say and then see which one takes off. Like, you know, like we're, that's where a lot of these conspiracy theorists. And then QAnon was just like, yeah, uh, face eating, skin, blah, 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 pedophile <laughs> ring. And it just clicked with people. And, it, and, it, and people ran with it like a schoolboy stealing the mail. He just right. took off down the block. Well, I think also it adds, like, um, to what you're saying, it adds immediacy, right? Right. You know, yeah. like, if you say, hey, these people are corrupt, yes. whatever, you can just go, these people are corrupt. But the minute you go, these people are pedophiles, right. then you go, they, pedophile. 
unequivocally bad. Right, I can right. shoot them and feel justified. Right. So well, let me tell yeah. you what they do. And I explained this to Tita last night. It's a classic sales technique. <laughs> they get their foot in the door with pedophilia. They go, hey, you hate pedophiles? <laughs> and people go, of course. And they go, we all hate pedophiles, right? And they go, you know, the, uh, did you hear this story about this uh, actual pedophile or whoever, you know, maybe whatever that guy's name, where the island, right. you know? And then they go, I hate that guy. And they go, and then they just turn the heat up a little more, a little more until they're like, all of Democrats are pedophiles. Yeah. And now you're raged up and they go, and they're eating babies. And they go, you just throw <laughs> eating babies in? They just yeah. eat babies. And they just yeah. throw them in and it's too late to turn back. You're already boiled like a lobster. Yeah. And then they go, I got the, the grenade store gave me too many grenades. I got two. Do you want one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's similar to how, uh, it's similar how to, to how the Ku Klux Klan, they also hate Catholics. Like, <laughs> That's how they get like the light guys in at first, you know. They're like, yeah, yeah. man, those Catholics are kind of annoying, aren't they? With their masks and their, you know, they're right. Yeah, Irish. They're running the cops and guys. Like, yeah, I guess I don't really like cask. Next thing you know, you're at a meeting. You go, oh, they don't even. They don't really even talk about the Catholics, man. Right. This is, but they I'm keep calling them Jews and blacks for some <laughs> yeah, reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and I could, I could see what you're saying. Like, man, we burn a cross. You know, yeah, yeah, right. we hate these Catholics. You, you know, those funny pointy pope hats that they wear. Yeah, you know what we do as a goof? We wear our own, kind of make <laughs> yeah. fun of. Them. Yeah. See, and I'll mention this. I said it once. I said it. I gotta tell you guys again. When I was a kid, I really thought they were the cool klutz gang <laughs> clan. So I thought they were just cool people who walked into tables, and I just didn't get why they are all racist. Right. And I would argue there's an alternate universe where the cool klutz clan is much better. They're not really hateful. They're just a bunch of guys who are used to, you know, pissing on themselves right. by accident yeah. because they fall and got scared. And they went, let's just turn this into a crew and we'll all be proud with the fact that we don't. Yeah. We walk into door hinges right. or whatever. Yeah. Why, led- why won't they recognize Mr. Bean as their leader? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've been they've been ruled by an iron, iron-fisted triumvirate of, of uh, Curly, Mo and... <laughs> Whatever the other one is, Larry, Shem. Right? Well, There's Shem got Jerry? kicked out. Who? It's it's. Who are the three main ones? Because Shem was the fourth. Mo, Cur- Mo, Mo, Larry, and Curly. Oh, Larry, Larry Mo, Mo, Larry, and Curly. Yeah. Right. Shem was the was the guy who had a ra- raging alcohol problem. Yeah, died, and then they said, "Let's bring in Larry." Yeah, <laughs> he was like that guy who was in the Beatles for like three songs. Right. Eddie, I always say Eddie Murphy, but that's not true, and I don't know. No, why it I is. It. Yeah, he was. <laughs> Man, that, if it's Eddie Murphy, on. wow, what a success story. Not only to accomplish all that after leaving the Beatles. Man, you were right. To, I mean, I would even, I'd say that he might have, you know, he was uh, right. So my, wait. my school chimed in. Okay, oh, yeah. go ahead, Anthony. Or, no, no, no. Uh, this is going to be information. My school probably. chimed in that uh, uh, Shemp actually was later. He replaced Curly after Curly had a stroke. But knowing the uh, Three Stooges' body of work, I don't really think you got to replace a guy that had a stroke. You know what I mean? That's right. works right into what they're doing. You know, yeah. right. uh, uh, no, it's called no consequences. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take a cannonball to the head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. From your Can't best friend. Fall face first into a frying pan that much without any kind of medical repercussions. <laughs> right. Anthony, you might think I'm being mean to you about not about saying, you know, listen, but I'm never as mean to you as Larry was. I've never pulled your shirt down and punched you in the chest, you know, or smacked you in the eyes, you know, look, and I feel real bad about it, but they never felt bad about taking a loaded gun and shooting it in their other friend's face just to turn them all dusty. I guess when I put it in the perspective of the three stooges, (laughs) a gang famously going after each other with lead pipes, you're right. You're a good friend. Well, and it's also, I would add to what Greg's saying, it's also oh great comedy. The guys blocked the eye poke. Guess what? You missed that block one time, blind for life, and nobody's <laughs> nobody's looking at the stakes on that. He's literally going a two handed poke directly at your eyes. Well, you mean he puts the block up and then they immediately go for the two hand and get him anyway. Yeah, yeah these get him guys anyway. are losing eyeballs left and right. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine they're cyborgs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder about if you. Uh, the autopsy on the Three Stooges. That doctor must have been like, "My God, this these are riddled bodies. This is like Batman, <laughs> you know, when he wake, when Alfred wakes up and he's got that long yeah. bruise running down his rib cage. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. you can't go on like this, man.' <laughs> yeah. Well, the autopsy just comes back, one piece of paper, and just says Mo. 
And they go, how do you die? Mo, Mo did all this. Are you crazy? Yeah. He, he put yeah. his feet in glue. And then uh, I, I swear to God, watch them. I watched an episode yeah. last week. What they did was with the dude, one of them fell asleep. And I did this. Uh, my step. I'm sorry. Let me slow down. And nice my work. parents' house, they have Adam's Cable, which only plays TV from like the 40s. So I watched an episode of Three Stooges. And one of the episode, they put Shemp's feet into a bucket and filled it with cement. <laughs> And then at the end of the episode, he fell into a river. And I guess they just re the TV reset, and he's back next week. But they right. killed people the way the mob kills people. They just <laughs> can't yeah, do that. That you know, because I guess nowadays you see that kind of uh, violence in cartoons. Because then people go, right. all right, well, I'm removed from this. These are just <laughs> animated. <laughs> you didn't have that then. The three stooges were were just live, killing yeah. each other. On air. Live, when they didn't have the CGI or technology to pull that off. Yeah. So a lot of that really hurt. And every, every, after every taping, the Three Stooges would sit in their dressing room just going, "Is th there's got to be a way to, to get this done without live humans. Please, <laughs> God, does anyone know how to make drawings move? Because I can't, I've got 38 broken ladder rungs stuck in my rectum yeah this guy's like we can't come up with a dummy a plastic body i my back looks like mankind yeah let me tell you, let me tell you too and look i hate to i hate to pull the pretentious card as a man who's watched over a hundred hours of master classes on screenwriting <laughs> they always try to tell you character development what did he learn the three stooges broke every boundary and everyone's back but they would just be like, well, what did he learn? I don't know. We hit him in the face of the bowling ball, and people are going crazy. There's 15 seasons of this. No, no care. It breaks every rule of storytelling. It's also like, it's also hilarious because, like, nobody even knows what the, Look at them. They're literally pouring oil. So we, we've got, uh, we've got uh, Larry and Mo. Just uh, Mike's brought up a picture of uh, Larry and Mo. <laughs> uh, just pumping Curly's mouth full of oil. Larry's yeah. wrenching his mouth open, and Mo is pumping him, uh, uh drilling, his, drilling teeth. his teeth apparently while he's yeah, standing he's... up. That's what Mike, happens when you don't have health care. Mike, can you I, you? I I don't know why you put this picture up of Abu Grave. Can you put up a picture of the three <laughs> stooges, please? <laughs> <laughs> who's, Abu, oh, who's Abu Grave? The, the prison where they tortured everyone. <laughs> <laughs> my my favorite Abu Ghraib picture is when they so like because because they every it was so horrific. I mean, it, it obviously violated all sorts of things America stands for, just torturing prisoners in that manner. But there's that one picture where they just have them in like a cheerleaders pyramid, yeah. and it's like uh, that's not that bad. <laughs> like you got you you had you had guard dogs. An right. inch from their penises when they were naked, and you think you're gonna break them down with the old uh, three guys on their knees on the bottom, two guys above them, and one guy on top. Come on, man, that's, that's fun. That's what I'll we call guard fun. Go ahead, anything. Sorry, I, but I will. I will say this. I, I, you know, I guess it's gonna come off too serious. But you guys are. We'll probably have some poking oh, holes yeah, in there. I'm sure. But I would say in their for who they held captive in their religion that. Is that's such shame? You know what I mean? Like being attacked by a guard dog, you could still call yourself like a soldier, a martyr, right. a warrior. But lying naked, like stacked laundry on on top of each other, while uh, you know the women GIs take pictures. I can't think of worse psychological torture for these I, men. Oh, in, in I a certain I, faith. I think I think of a different picture. I mean, this was literally clothes on, blindfolded. Human pyramid style. See, and I know what's maybe happening I, here. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm imagining this. See if you can find this Abu Ghraib. Search Abu Ghraib. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm going to riff FBI on it anyway. Watch list. Go ahead. <laughs> let me just go. What's happening here is let me tell you. I if I've always said to myself because as a you know as someone who likes to write, you have to put yourself in their circumstance. And if I was a man who had to torture people, I would say to myself, yeah, "Those are just dead bodies." <laughs> Uh, Why gonna, are you showing me dead bodies? Yes, uh, I, Mike's brought up turn the this picture. Off, please. Mike, please don't ever do anything Mike's, like this again. Mike's brought up the picture. I'm going to go ahead and uh, rescind everything I said. Uh, I had really Let changed that picture in my saying. mind. Greg, go ahead. Sorry it makes, Now it's going to be horrible. But uh, yeah. Mike just pulled up what I think was just a bunch of stacked bodies. 
Uh, but if I'm going on what I thought Brendan thought he saw, the idea of them being stacked like a pyramid, yeah. Yeah. like a fun thing. What's like, well, if you're a guard and you're torturing people, maybe you're like, I've never been in a cheerleading pyramid before, sure. and my friends at home aren't going to let me do it. So like, maybe I'll just do one that's not so bad for them, but I get to finally be the tip of the pyramid, which sure. this joke seems... I hate it now that I've just seen we've made it real and I've seen real torture and now I just can't feel I just don't feel comfortable even talking about this anymore. But well, that joke lives in a world where Brendan said the human, you know, that makes yeah. sense within the confines of the world that Brendan said we we're well, living. What yeah. a view, what a view into my brain, the tricks it's been doing to make me be able to live <laughs> in this world. The picture Mike brought up was the true picture of Abu Ghraib, which is exactly as Anthony described, just a pile of naked men with female GIs just laughing it up and a guy with his arms folded. Hor horrific, horrific and, and terribly insulting. My mind saw that picture once and changed it to a good old timey cheerleading pyramid yeah. with fully clothed men stacked in a nice, neat triangle just to make myself be able to sleep at night. Uh, that that's, was what the defense, that's what the defense mechanisms are there for man yeah. that's why they're built in you yeah. know yeah. you gotta change that shit to a cheerleading troop uh, when you see real humans <laughs> dead yeah. can't yeah. live in a world that ugly yeah. jesus uh, that, um, that's how ahead. i feel when i listen to atmosphere <laughs> a human pyramid of death that feeling yeah. that you guys just had i listen to that and i go i gotta transform this into listenable music now, speaking of listenable music, and I don't know if you want to get there yet, but of course, Greg has some 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 big news uh, for the listeners. Greg, of course, made the Summer Jam beat. If you aren't a Patreon uh, subscriber, Greg's producing is just getting it's getting good. It's getting great, I think. And uh, we had uh, we had some some Greg. You wanna you wanna kind of. I do, but I did want to just finish off one last sure. thing about that <laughs> about something before sure. which. I mean, this is from before is and i just want a little behind the curtains and it's nice because we have something to roll into after so we don't have to play into this yeah. because this is what's going to burn me up is the fact that there's a chance i heard anthony's feelings before with the not listening thing but what we do here and this is what i do a lot of times this is a problem is that like i will do if you try to do a fun joke which is close to what people are like and you're like well, we're gonna riff on it you know it's like greg's gay or brendan's crazy right but then sometimes you just get a little too close <laughs> And then they go, hey, man, that was real. And then you go, oh, shit. Like, that's the danger of these, like, playing with each other sometimes is you get – sometimes you you get a little too close. And I and I feel bad about the thing. But I was just trying to make it into, like, a fun and he doesn't listen thing. Yeah, no, man. I mean, I you know, I'm I'm not upset in the least. I, was, I you moved on, but I saw well, your eyes. Well, no, I will say this. I was – what I meant was real, but it's also right. not that serious. Do you right, know what right, I mean? Right. Like sure. I could say in the moment that I was upset and, and I was, but I also wasn't so upset where this would cause any kind of fracture or any, you know what I mean? This sure. was, this was a small bend of a branch. Sure. And there's friendship that's built upon being able to make mistakes with each you other. Have to, yeah. And you, of course. you, you have well, to be able to say those things. And also that's what I was trying to do. Yeah, but no, I, you know, totally that's what I was great. trying to do. Like, yeah, I, I, I didn't, the minute that, and that ended, that ended. Right. And, I know. And it I wasn't even a thing, thing, but I what I was trying that, to express yeah. was that like it wasn't a thing that was serious that I'm mad about right. and I'm bringing it on the podcast. It was like, right. oh, this is a fun Anthony thing right. that we could fuck around with. And then it was like, oh, he might think that this is my way of getting it out for real. And I'm like, no, I, I, I okay, but you get it. I think we get each yeah. other, but I wanted to play. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'd points. like to drag it on a little further. <laughs> uh, because Ron, uh, the keeper of the keeper of legend. Yeah, because uh <laughs> the truth is. The truth is, the onus here is on me because I I, I brought up the instance, right? And uh, it it kind of goes with what Greg was saying. Is sometimes I do feel my comedic role on the podcast is to lean into the like stickler to the what like comedic role. To, like. Yeah, man, this guy can't stop today. That, hammers, hammers, hammers. You get yeah. one. You get Sorry, one. man, I'm too mean today. You got hammers me great. Right. No, 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 no. But we'll you know what I'm saying? Ball. Like, exactly sure. what Greg said. Like, sometimes I feel like, oh, yeah, that's my job is to, like, point out uh 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 like like inaccuracy, like bust, bust you, and then everyone has a good laugh about it, you know? But it's like sometimes they are, A, not that funny, and B, uh, hurtful to you, my friend. Anthony and uh, so Greg, don't take this on you. If anyone made yeah, Anthony... your shirt talking, I'll be honest, it makes me someone I don't want to be. Well, <laughs> God loves ugly. 
yeah. I'm going to have to take it off. But, yeah, I mean, it is fun. We all rib. We all rib. And anytime you rib with me, I write it down and I investigate it later. (laughs) I go, ah, laugh. And then I go, I should look into that, though. I should probably look into that as a thing. But for the most part, here's the thing I've also come to terms with. Because I had that issue with with a friend who uh, hurt my feelings for real, um, I said. I mean, which one? Because no, you, yeah, we <laughs> talked about it and I didn't want to bring up the name. All right. Okay. Got it. Uh, you hurt my feelings for real. And I went, I have to look into this as a person of who I am. But then I just start to get the, because I started going, well, maybe my friends don't like me. My friends just don't like me. I go to that place. I go, none of my friends like me. And it makes no sense. Do. And then I went, uh, then I just said, you know what, Greg, you are what you are. And if they don't like you, they don't like you. But what are you going to do? Rehaul the whole system? You're going to do a full uh, renovation of who you are as a human being? Like, <laughs> You can't afford to do that. You got your mistakes. You not only do they have to accept your mistakes, you have to mis- accept your mistakes. And that I don't I don't know how uh, how we got here, but uh, I think that's a good lesson. And I fuck that guy uh, mm-hmm. because he couldn't accept me for my mistakes. And you guys accept me for who I am. Well, also, you, you know, I mean that uh, that is one way of dealing with that thought in your brain. But another thought is like, yeah, we wouldn't hang out with you if we didn't like you. <laughs> you know, like I can easily just well, they have to hang out with me because we do a podcast together and we yeah. need the money. It's a hard time. I can jujitsu I find a way man. all of this. Yeah. You'd find a way to get out of it. Yeah. I if yeah. I was really that unhappy, I'd find a way to get out of it. <laughs> it's very right. easy. You just quit. Uh <laughs> yeah, man. There's a CVS that's hiring. I might just work <laughs> at anyone. So uh, I don't worry about it. Now, there is right. one quick segment because we do have time today. Uh, um, there's one quick yes, segment. We got to get to Frogman. Oh, we got to get to Frogman and we got to get to the song. But I think we should finish on the song for reals. We have to. And we yeah. can end on the song. Yeah. But well, we'll we need save to save Frogman time for people. Yeah. Yeah. Frog but real quick, I don't even Mike, have anything on Frogman. Real quick, Mike, I would like you to pull this up because I think <laughs> I it's worth discussion it. as the most underappreciated director of all time mike can you pull up uh chris columbus's full filmography please because you guys are going to be mind blown this guy's Dude, made- i'll do a christopher columbus movie marathon with you any day of the week this now, chris columbus has directed every movie that's good can i say this about him do you think he it meant anything for him to do or not do the movie 1492 about the real christopher columbus they had they had him on the line and it, they, he, the the studio nixed it. They said this is two on the head. They said this is going to be confusing. <laughs> this is- they got him for this <laughs> film by Chris Columbus. Yes, about yes. Christopher Columbus. <laughs> yes, they said this is going to be very confusing for audiences. They Thank so you. they had him. They had him. The deal was in the works and all that, and uh, nixed by you know big money uh, as always. Let me tell you this. Greg said, though, for a second to live out the fantasy of they got him for this. <laughs> Just go, did they have a time travel machine? They <laughs> like, I mean, who's going to tell the true tale? But the honest issue I would have with that is be like, this guy's clearly is going to be in the pocket of Christopher Columbus. I mean, he's definitely related to him. He's got the same name. And two, he doesn't want him to look. If you your name is Hitler, you're going to try to paint Hitler in a better light so people stop shitting on you. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like anything that goes wrong with Christopher Columbus, he's gonna it's gonna do, it's gonna kind of affect his life. So he's gonna yeah. paint him with a better light. That's a great yeah, call. Like, yeah. There's yeah, gonna just, be lines yeah. in the movie just like, Captain, uh, your penis is so huge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For whatever reason, the Lenape Indians could not get over the size of his Johnson. <laughs> when I gotta say, when Debbie Columbus and Ricky Columbus. We're having the I'm pregnant conversation. What do you want to name him? And the dad went, how about Chris? And the mom went, you know, there's another. G- you know what yeah. that means? Yeah. Like, you have to know that you're naming your kid after Christopher Columbus. Right. Of course. Of course. A true psychopath does that. Yeah. Right. As they okay. go, this kid is we're going to put pressure on him from day one. This kid's got to beat out the guy who discovered America. Yeah. And arguably, Mike, pull that up. Arguably, he has. Because let's go through this real quick. No slaves. Because it's mind-blowing. Uh, so go to the top. Go up he to the top. Slaves, so he already won. Go all the way to the top. So look look at this. First wow. of all, Reckless. wrote the Gremlins. Wrote the Goonies. Uh, already two classics. Uh, directed uh, Home Alone. Uh, directed Home Alone 2. Hang on a second. I got to pick one out here. I know you're just going to list them here, but I just want to skip ahead to Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland. Was there a, wait a minute, the fish movie? 
He, no, this was an 89. He did a pre-fish movie? Yeah, I guess so. Little Nemo? Hmm. And I, confusing I don't, to me. Yeah, I agree with you, man, but it doesn't seem like Little Nemo was... She was in... This Little Nemo was in Slumberland, whoever they are, whereas the Nemo that we know, which was found in the ocean. Yeah, not everyone has all hits, okay? Oh, now, my God, I remember Little Nemo. It was like a... Oh, my God, I loved Little Nemo because he looked like me when I was a kid. Yes. I used to love this, but my entire memories have been changed because the other Nemo have destroyed Little Nemo. Yes, yes. Yeah. I absolutely. say that this is my new favorite Nemo movie. <laughs> yes, yes. Great. The official Nemo of the Rad Dude cast. Directed, uh, directed Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, Dude, can, wow. Scroll up. Scroll scroll up. Home, you forgot Home Alone? Uh, uh, no, I said both Home Alones. I said Nine both months? Home Alones. Oh, maybe I wasn't. Uh, both, uh, 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 two, the first two uh, Harry Potters directed and executive produced. Uh, uh, and then after that, you know. Christmas not, the Cranks. Not a lot, really. I'll, yeah, I'll say this, man. You know your resume is thick when you don't even mention Stepmom. Yeah, right. yeah, I skipped you right know? over Stepmom. I mean, the guy wrote The Goonies and Gremlins. That's crazy. And then directed... I mean, there's a, th th this is an undersung hero of Hollywood. Yeah, I say he discovered America. Because he yeah. actually did. He uncovered right. America. Yeah. Yes. yes, he discovered the art of storytelling, and he discovered America's heart. Yeah. See, Christopher Columbus found America. Christopher Columbus found America's heart. Yeah. And that's, I think that I just kind of summed up what you were saying. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Listen to what people saying, then just repeat it back to him with more words <laughs> and slower. That yeah. is actually like yeah. that is actually like one of those things that you'll see in those like rules of power books. That's <laughs> like you want someone oh, to right. like them, say what they said, and they'll think and they'll love you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, yeah, somebody my, told, yeah go ahead greg oh no i just say my first rule of power is give them back their business card and say i don't need it i memorized your address <laughs> <laughs> number one rule of power and for the patreon we'll get into a 15 other rules of power maybe uh, or maybe we won't but or maybe we'll do it at some point well, I'll say we'll talk about it. Promising, we can't keep promising Patreon ideas because we never do them. Yes, we it's can. Rest of development. <laughs> if people, if we ever follow through, people will be shocked. And I think people <laughs> live for the promise. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know how, like on Arrested Development, they would go next time on Arrested I mean, Development. That is just what I just said. <laughs> how is you oh. going to call this guy a listener? <laughs> when? <laughs> well, I'll say I messed up there. <laughs> I'll say, I mean, it was directly. I went, this is what happens on the rest of development. And you went, let me tell you where this happens. The rest of development. <laughs> Although you just repeated back what I said slower. That's a Greg move. And that's also a power, power move. move. How do we know? Move. A triple power move. How do we know I wasn't doing a power move? I think you were. And that's just what I said. You just, I just said it's a power move and you said it's a power move. That's yes. I mean, the power a mirror. Move, maybe. I'm going to call you Mr. Mirror from now on. The mime. <laughs> just kidding. Well, I mean, it was just a joke. Instead of just kidding, I'll say, mm, what were we talking about? I've completely lost my mind. Um, we were talking we about power, Inception. Uh, we were talking about power moves and promising power moves on the Patreon. Okay, is um, anybody mad right now, real quick? No, <laughs> no right. man. We take the tone of the room. Let me get a little room tone here. Anyone mad? I'm right. not mad at doing something you exactly claimed that I did. <laughs> Why would I be mad at that? That's hilarious. Dude, it was we I really kind of want to listen back to you the inception there that happened it was like <laughs> it was crazy you went from a it was a, you repeated back to you you didn't i don't say you didn't listen i guess but then said what i said which we just said was a power move and then turned it into it was like a trip it was a crazy anyway it, yeah it if, was go ahead anthony please. If you have thought if i had done that on purpose i'm a genius yes <laughs> yes and i think you did and i think you are and i think it was to the point where i res 100 percent rescind my apology given that, earlier man, this is not <laughs> all right we, that's right. what the apology was for it was for the additional hammers i never cared about being called out on something oh, I did. well then i'm I apologized I'm for my actions and i found a hammer thrown in my eye well, i wasn't i, I wasn't reason. part of the hammer team so i'm cool i thought uh, you were mad about the point out i'm good no i could care less about a point out yes I it's don't all great like extra hammers that is that like an explosive device? Uh, <laughs> we learned that word. Oh, uh, that was incendiary. We learned it last week. Uh, for those of you that don't subscribe to Patreon, you're idiots because we did a full vocab episode. <laughs> that was a really good episode. 
people, I enjoyed it. People, the, the vocabulary episode and the freestyle episode, uh, people that like our linguistic episodes. They're yeah. very big on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. I'll just say I just saw a woman walk behind and disappear behind your mattress. There it goes. I saw no. Julia walk behind you and disappear behind a mattress. Uh, just disappear. Like no she came back. ever again. Okay, my bad. <laughs> the old, loop, the old new roo, the old new roo hotel you got going. What's now what's um, going on at nighttime? Because uh, for those of you that listen to audio only, Anthony's been in Cincinnati, obviously, uh helping out with the baby. Uh, plot of a movie, if you ask me. But uh, he's been uh, sleeping on a nice, nice air mattress. It's always behind him if you watch the videos. Uh, can I never, just, can I just never. Plot of the movie line. Yes, the plot of a movie where he is living to help a baby, but it opens up a new room massage parlor. Is that the plot of your movie, Brendan? Yes. Just expand uh, on that for me. What? <laughs> I don't oh, expand on the plot of your movie. Well, as you know, these type of movies I'm referring to. Not a whole lot of plot, if you know what I mean. Dirty boy movies. Step stepmom says, I'm I got my massage test coming up Friday. I know this is wrong, but I need to practice, you know, that whole <sighs> genre. Anyway, uh what's going on with your sheet situation? Because there's never a sheet on the air mattress. Are you good sleeping question. sheetless on it or do you take it off every day? Uh no, it's a uh, good question. The sheet covers halfway down the air mattress. It's kind of it's a uh, it's got a good girth to it, so you're not able to see the sheet. There is this fitted is sheet. Double. Oh, is that yeah. the bottom? Am I looking at the bottom? Yeah, you're looking ah, at the, I see. I, see. I heard all the blankets uh, that we have off to the side to, to convert this uh, future infant's bedroom into a podcasting <laughs> studio, yeah. and I flipped the air mattress up on itself. Um, <laughs> now, uh, uh, that being said, uh, Greg, take mm -hmm. it away. What? <laughs> Take it away with introducing we uh, the the song. Oh right, right. Um. Oh, so yeah. Uh, I wasn't ready. Oh, so we did put out. Remember, we did put out a call to arms to put some lyrics out on um the Rad Dude Cast Summer Jam, and we got a bunch of people who a bunch of people just sent lyrics, and uh, those were nice. And then we got some guy who did the Marty one, and we reposted that in the Rad Dude Cast After Dark. Excellent, um, excellent, excellent, and hilarious. Also, what I love about it is that, like, uh, clearly he just tr went for it, you know. And that's what I like. He was like, yeah. "I never tried this. I'm gonna do this." <laughs> Wrote lyrics, sang over it, hilarious. It was like, and then we got our most recent submission, which was from uh, Dave Z, who I don't even want to set it up. We're just gonna play it for you because my God, if this guy didn't fucking bring yeah. it, bring it home. Dave Z, the MC, and here it is, the summer jam. Wait a minute, should we pause it real quick? Yeah, Can we just sure, play it at the sure. end of the episode. Let's just play it at the end of the episode. Or do you well, want to play it now? I think we should. I just play want to it. talk over it. Well, no. Why don't we play it now and then we'll kind of talk about it. Oh, okay. Is that does that make sense? And this will give us a time to take a break, rest our minds. Oh, nice. Yeah. Or, take a break. or should we take a vote on when to play it? I like, I like idea of breaks. Go ahead. I, and vote. I like playing it. Yeah, I like playing it. We'll take a break and then we'll briefly uh, discuss um, the song and then uh, head out. Wonderful. Great. All right. And here it is, the summer jam. That's great. Yeah, I can take it from here. It's the Rad Dude Cast. Summer Jam. It's Dave Z, the MC. Yeah. Dzilla, the B Killer. What? Yeah. <laughs> you know what it is. What is it? Except you probably don't. Yeah. I don't know. yeah. Come on. Yeah. It's the one and only. So. Your homie. Dzilla. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Bring in that hook. Yo, where's that hook? Let's go! It's the Red Dude Cast, Gravestone, Brandon S. Anthony DeVito, and we bang this everywhere. Got yeah. the beats on fire, Black. the fun is in the air. No. We coming for that ass with this year's summer jam. Come it's on. the Red Dude Cast, Gravestone, Brandon S. Anthony DeVito, and we bang this everywhere. Yeah. Got the beats on fire, Come the on. fun is in the air. Yeah. Yeah. We coming for that ass with this year's summer jam. Great, cook me up some heat, now it's time to feed the streets. The hardcore anthem is the RDC. Yo, it's hard to be discreet like when Anthony E 
Saints who got ADHD. Brendan shirtless on IG. It's the rad dude, cast three man wolf pack. Bicycle in the back. Yeah, they gon' have you laugh, crack up characters, and improv. And yes, ending just a couple of best friends. And then Brendan is the rad dude, cast Greg Stone, Brandon is what? Anthony DeVito. When we bang this everywhere, got the beats on fire. Black. The fun is in the air. No. We coming for that ass with this year's summer jam. Come it's on. the rad dude, cast Greg Stone, Brandon is what? Anthony DeVito. When yeah. we bang this everywhere, got the beats on fire. Yeah. The fun is in the air. Yo, we coming for that ass with yeah. this year's summer jam. Sometimes Greg rambles on and be man reigns it in. The nature of the show, I don't know. Maggot bins, Anthony's shitting again. Greg's high out his mind. 300 plus episodes travel through space and time. Burning Mac accents, the intentions are pure. Though the jokes are hardcore, Greg's inventions galore. Brendan's asking for news, Anthony seems confused. Hit up that Patreon, they got three tiers to choose. It's the red dude, cares. Greg stole Brandon is. Anthony DeVito, when we bang this everywhere. Got the beats on fire, the fun is in the air. Yeah. No. We coming for that ass with this year's summer jam. Come it's on. the red dude, Kaz, Greg Stone, Brandon Ayers, Anthony DeVito, when we bang this everywhere. Come yeah, on. The beats on fire, Black. the fun is in the air. No. We coming for that ass with this year's summer jam. Come it's on. the red dude, Kaz, it's the RDC, hardcore summer jam. It's a party on the beat for the streets to the burbs. Every city, every town, it's the red dude, Kaz, summer jam year round. It's the red dude, Kaz, it's the RDC, hardcore summer jam. It's a party on the beat. From the streets to the burbs, every city, every town, it's the red dude, cast summer jam year round. It's the red dude, cast Greg Stone, Brandon is what? Anthony DeVito, when we bang this everywhere, yeah. got the beats on fire, yeah. the fun is in the air. No. We coming for that ass with this year's summer jam. Come it's on. the red dude, cast Greg Stone, Brandon is what? Anthony DeVito, when we bang this everywhere, yeah. got the beats on fire, yeah. the fun is in the air. No. We coming for that ass with this year's summer jam. Man. Damn, ice, dude! It's ice so good, so good. It's so, good. It's, it's so yeah. good, and it's also so accurate. Uh, uh, <laughs> like the part about the intentions being pure, you know? Yeah. Like it's oh like, yeah, because he knew that on opinion. the head. He made me feel because you know if I'm doing a Bernie Mac thing, I'm going to be upset about it. And he goes, yeah. "No, no, Greg, we know your intentions are pure. You can do a black guy voice if your intentions are pure." Yeah, yeah, it, that was am amazing. Even Brendan shirtless and IG. That's kind of a deeper cut. That's you know, a deep like, cut. That like guy a, loves it. He yeah, loves it. He's that, looking. Uh, incredible. Um, yeah. Dave Z. Uh, he has a 2011 album out called Mental Strength. Uh, I would implore everyone to give that a listen and support him. That was that was it was awesome. Uh, and, I, oh, go ahead, Greg. Please. Oh, I just want to throw a, a few things about that that I like. One, whenever you get one of these things, usually a fan will. They'll always ultimately say something that hurts your feelings. <laughs> Nothing in there. What you know? Like it'd be like nails it, Bernie Mac, blah blah blah. And then it's like, and Greg is going bald, and you're like, ah, oh, really? Am I? Like you learn about yourself, like, or I don't really like character reps. I skip those on Thursday, right. and you're like, well, it's it always specific. <laughs> none of them really. That's okay, Ben, we appreciate the truth, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't. But no, all of it was like. Not only were the jokes good, but he also kind of understood how sensitive we are when he delivered all of those with uh, all of those lyrics. I mean, yeah. it's weird also just to see that the summer jam is locked and loaded, like you know, as a producer, and that was like my baby, you know, right. to, to make a beat to see it take a different life is like, man, that's art, you know. It's like, hey, I did my part, now you do your part and do something else happen there, which is very see that's. Yes, to go in exactly what you're saying, Greg. That's what my concern was, because you know, I, I you present me with the Mona Lisa, and then you say you have to paint over this. Mm. Yes, yeah, and he dash on it, and you were just were, yeah, you worry the whole time about ruining it. But Dave Z handed the Mona Lisa back, and you went somehow you've improved upon perfection. Somehow she's got. On there. <laughs> Sorry, and man. was that exactly what I was going to say? So no need to apologize. That was the exact joke I was going to make. Uh, Dave Z, I, she appears more buxom. Yeah, and I, Auntie, I already talked to Greg about this, but like the one thing I absolutely take no offense about because I think it has something. I it must have something to do with my name, but like I literally. Right have friends from elementary school that put an S on the end of my last name. Like there's something about my name where I think yeah. people eat, no matter how many times you've heard it or see it, you <laughs> think right. it's airs. Like I have people that will read it and be like, 
hey, Brendan Ayers. And it's like, you're looking at it, man. So I t- I never take, it's the same with Brandon. Like I never right. take offense at that because I'm like, you're getting at it. You know what I, I mean? Like, mention I, something I know about what you that. mean. I don't know that it was like a, I think he knows your name is Air, but I feel like sometimes within rap, you add an S to make it easier, to make it flow, you know, and people go like, like if like people go like, you know, Greg Stones, you know, like they're just adding their own flair to it. It's not necessarily not knowing your name. It's more of like, you just add in a little juice. I I agree. I agree, man. I think he took artistic license and rightfully so. And I think it was just a pro move. Could he, be. He knew enough to know uh, the way I say airs is going to sound cooler than just saying air. And I think he was 100% right. Absolutely. And what's the be. rhyme with it? Because what's does he rhyme with it? Because Brendan airs, blah, 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 something. And what's the rhyme? Do you remember the, the lyric? Because maybe he needed to rhyme it. And he was like, well, I'll make it airs so I can rhyme this. It, uh, listen, it absolutely could be. Either way, I have no problem with it. It's a phenomenal song. I will just tell you both I've been living with this la- name long enough <laughs> that people. <laughs> exactly. They do it. People put an S on it very frequently. Kind of. I don't. I think it's the name. I think it like feels like it needs an S. You know, like I, like I mean, I'm not exaggerating. When okay. there is not like my best friends, but there are people who have known me for thirty plus years that will put an S on my last name. Like I, I think they're also doing the same thing. Like I think they're adding their little. <laughs> I think some names people just add a little bit of a add twist a little to. flair. Give you a yeah, little flower. Just, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, make it your Why own. Not? Yeah. That you was know? that blew my mind when Greg said that to me. And look, the uh, the um, other ones people made were unbelievable too. Unbelievable, also. All you guys, just unbelievable. But Dave Z really just being a, an established rapper. It, I mean, that was it, it, when Greg said that to me. I was like, "Fuck, dude, this guy like nailed every aspect w- without like he just like this should be our um, our our uh, log line." This should be our log line if we ever try and pitch this. Like, we can't do it. Dave Z has to do it. Yeah. And it has to be to a fire beat. It's a summer jam. <laughs> yeah. It can't be written on paper. Listen to this. And you'll Some know. Some people have elevator about. pitches. We have summer jams in elevators that we yeah. force you to go to the 15th floor to listen to the whole song. Yeah. Ladies and I gentlemen, watch- maybe we oh, present Fred. Dave Z. <laughs> 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 so quick two things about that. One is I'd like to ask if back in the day, see, we have we have um we have beats SOS uh SOS Beats, who does beats all the time and a yeah. good friend of the pod, um, has done a ton of things. But then we also had this other guy do a beat once and he made like this insane like traps song for us once. I'm yeah. wondering if it was the same guy. Brendan, he sent it to you. So I don't know if you remember if it is the if it's the same guy we had. This is back when we were in Becky's fucking right. Yeah, man, I have no way of verifying that or <laughs> looking into that. I have no idea. And also, don't forget our both our intro and outro music uh, produced by Zip. Um, yeah, check him out. Oh, on right. Twitter and Instagram. Uh, he does. He does cool. He does cool stuff now. Where he does like um, these uh, DJ. Well, now with COVID, it's kind of shut down. But these DJ and like um, high level chef nights because he's in the restaurant industry. So he'll get like he'll book like a oh, really whoa. good DJ, and then the chef will like team up with the DJ. That's so menu. cool. Yeah. So. Uh, so we got a lot of musical uh, uh, talent that it, uh, has contributed to this podcast. But man, Dave Z, thank you so much. And Greg, you should be proud of yourself. Yeah, I, should, it's, I just put loops. That's the thing, no, right? It's like a bunch of loops that I put together. So it's like, I don't know. I'm not playing. If, if I was sitting there at a piano like D minor, what's the next chord? Like, I don't understand chords. So I wouldn't be surprised if somebody else just one day went, yeah, man, I've heard a billion people essentially do similar you know, like remember Collins Ave, Anthony, when we did Collins Ave, we did <laughs> yeah, uh it's different, man. We just took the noises that were already in Garage Band and mashed them together. Well, that's pretty much what I did. We like no. it was just a bunch of like, but I put it over a beat and then we did Collins Ave. But that song, Collins Ave, that we the main hook in the Collins Ave song that we used is in the Joe Rogan intro. And it drives me crazy every time I hear the Joe Rogan intro because it's like that was in the beginning of the Collins Ave song uh-huh. that we wrote. So it's like you just take loops, and I mean, there's a ton of loops in that song that I've layered over each other and mixed them. So they, I try to make it sound as different as possible. But it's like, I mean, I don't know that anyone can uh, not do that. Your uh, negative self talk is not negative. It's so insane because what you're describing is literally 
the basis of producing a hip hop beat. <laughs> it's literally what yeah. all of the and yes, of course, of course, there's some that have a little more theoretical music knowledge than you that know chords and can add in some piano and some manual drum machine stuff like but but there are others who are literally just doing loops in a computer program exactly exactly what you're doing and are you know multi-millionaire producers so it's you phenomenal it band, it's, not, it's phenomenal you band, you're not an art. um if you do it on garage band you're not an artist that's what i say if it's garage, you know, like anytime I people go, can you edit video? It's like, I can use iMovie. You know, when people say that, I go, well, you don't really. It's just a lot of drag. Anyway, I appreciate it. Um, one <laughs> other thing, nice. Anthony, unless you're going to say something, Anthony, I, one other thing on Dave Z uh, I wanted to throw out there, which was a little upsetting to me, was when you told me you had looked up Dave Z, you'd found that he, like, I guess you had followed his, like, music page. But what he had sent it to me was from his personal page. So all I saw was a dad with his family. And I was so happy to be like, oh, man, this dad has this wild skill that he has no idea he has. And then you were like, oh, no, he's got an album. I was like, oh, of course, because it's great. Like, this guy knows what he's doing. But I was like, man, it was just some kid who was struck by light. Some dad <laughs> struck by lightning in his basement. I was like, what a we have a Rudy story. I was ready to like blow this guy up and be like, right. this guy has no idea how he can hit a three pointer from anywhere on the court. <laughs> and he has no idea because right. he went the wrong path in life. Right, he's right, like, right. oh no, he's already following it. And it's great. So it's yeah. like, oh, that's cool too, I guess. Um, <laughs> couple, a couple, oh, a couple of big announcements here because uh, we got to get out of here, but a couple of big announcements. Um, uh, for those of you that are in the corresponding Patreon tiers, by the way, uh, check out patreon.com slash rad dude cast. The world has changed, baby. There is premium content galore. The tiers have changed. Things are just Papadopoulos on there. Uh, but if you are in one of the appropriate tiers that gives you access to the live events, well, guess what? This month is scheduled. That is going to be Friday, February 18th, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Details will follow in the Patreon. It's going to be interactive, live episode. You have access to all of us. Any 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 kind of sexual questions you want to ask, whatever you want to do, uh, that's <laughs> fine. Uh, in terms of where I'm coming from, uh, I will be uh, at... Uh, uh the i'll be back in bloomington uh at the comedy attic uh and they do just a phenomenal job with social distancing and all that and uh especially i'd like all you old vaccinated people and you uh <laughs> you essential workers everyone with a vaccine come out it's safe who cares uh i'll be there uh february uh 26th and 27th and i look forward to doing that i always have a blast there and uh uh yeah thank you guys and uh, follow us everywhere at the rad dude cast uh not everywhere i mean really just uh twitter and uh, instagram and uh you can go on facebook and check out the rad dude cast after dark oh yeah i have, to have a plug if that's okay i have a plug of course all right yeah. it seemed like we were just done there no, uh never. Oh, no. Okay, good. Well, Anthony got quite like Anthony didn't look like he had plugs. And I was like, all right, well, I just want to say something, which is very simple. Um, if you guys could follow me on, it's very specific. I need everyone to follow me on Instagram. Even if you don't have Instagram or if you've got multiple pages, follow me at Greg F. Stone because I need 10,000. I don't have 10,000 followers, but you, I can't post YouTube videos until I have 10,000 followers. So I have to make a real push to get 10,000 followers on Instagram. And also, I'm doing these Twitch live streams, which is Greg F. Stone on Twitch. Again, if you don't have if you don't have Twitch, just go on and then uh, add me so I can become an affiliate and actually set your reminders on Twitch to get alerts when I go on Twitch because I'm doing a lot of three in the morning, really high, uh, <laughs> playing video games or painting and doing all types of wild shit. And I think those videos disappear. So uh, follow me there so we can. It's really just been me and two people every time I sign on. And it's just just talking to people, which has been really fun. And the, the live events are going to be amazing. But um, they've been I didn't like nice testers for these live events. They've been really great. But yeah, if you could follow me on those two things, that would really help me out. Sorry, Anthony, do you have anything you'd like to say? Yeah, man, don't worry about it. You don't have to apologize. You could expand as much as you want with what you're sure. saying. Um, I just have two dates. Uh, uh, February 22nd, I will be at uh, City Steam in Hartford, Connecticut. And um, March 3rd, I'll be at Helium Comedy Club in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 
PA. That's it. That sounds good to me. The Rad Dude Cast is hosted by Anthony DeVito, Brendan Ayer, and Greg Stone. Original music by Brian Zippert. Produced by Mike Suarez. Executive producers Brendan Ayer, Greg Stone, and Anthony DeVito. Executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly for the Laugh Button Podcasts.